Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady channel. Today I'll be back to my usual structure, where I won't be disappearing for essential business, but will instead keep making stuff that you all find helpful and educational. Watch this video to learn about FGate and its potential impact on XRP prices, as well as Michael Sons, CEO of Grayscale, thoughts on the spot Bitcoin ETF and more. Later, I will provide a market overview. Now, we can begin. ETHgate effects, according to Ethereum Insider, anyone holding XRP should be concerned about it. Stephen Naryoff A former advisor to Ethereum, has warned XRP holders to be wary of ETHgate and the impact of the now infamous hypothesis on the price of the cryptocurrency. Naryoff, Stephen An early advisor to the Ethereum Foundation has highlighted the significance of ETHgate for the XRP community. Yesterday, the well-known crypto advisor revealed this during a conversation with an XRP holder known as XRP Kern Kidnarioff Suez Storm X co-founder, who goes by a pseudonym. The most recent tweet from Narioff revealed that he has filed a lawsuit against Simon Yu, CEO of Storm X, and Ari Yu, co-founder of the US Blockchain Coalition, alleging that they conspired with the authorities and filed false allegations that resulted in his 2019 indictment. The longtime Ethgate commenter Naryoff recently accused Simon and Ares of extorting him out of tokens worth millions of dollars, which he said they stole. The crypto advisor has come clean about the fact that he has audio recordings and other proof that Simon and Ari tried to buy him off by offering him additional tokens. Reasons why Ethereum's gate is important for XRP holders. Examining the progress, the XRP community does not give a hoot about Ethereum, according to the current boy of XRP. If Ripple wants to pave the way for a possible XRP surge, the EX user said the company needs to settle its dispute with the SEC. In addition, the current XRP guy has voiced his displeasure with the price of XRP, implying that it is currently trapped around the 0.6 level. Two key points were brought up in response to Nari's post that explain why XRP enthusiasts should be concerned about Ethgate. Nari claims that the so-called Ethgate theory is the main reason XRP is still trading at about 0.6. The ex-Ethereum advisor went on to say that XRP holders, who care about a free society, should worry about corruption outside their tokens. The Ethgate incident and debate have been going on for years, and the idea behind it has gained a lot of attention in the crypto industry. Theorists behind the notion claim that Ethereum's development team colluded with powerful SEC officials to steer regulation in the cryptocurrency's favor, while other digital assets were disadvantaged. Some have speculated that this connection is what led William Hinman, a former director of the SEC, to classify Ethereum and Bitcoin as non-security in 2018. Since ETH has grown sufficiently dispersed over time, Hinman argued, it is no longer appropriate to call it a security. When compared to the inaugural sales of other digital assets, Narioff and other crypto advocates claimed that Ethereum's 2014 ICO exhibited less decentralization. According to Lane Reddig, a former developer of the Ethereum core, 70% of the supply of ETH was distributed during the pre-mined stage. Which lends credence to this assertion. According to him, the sales were the main reason why just a small number of people bought a significant amount of pre-mined Ethereum. Nobody knows who the whales are who scavenge the massive quantities of pre-mined ETH, fascinating until now. Like with any other field, conspiracy theories are nothing new when it comes to crypto. However, I am still perplexed as to how this idea may possibly impact the XRP price. The SEC officials were apparently sold a theory. If we started paying them regularly to choke Ripple, then how many years would it take? Seems strange and unfounded? I get that Gensler has a motive for promoting Ripple and the other startups, but is he manipulating Ethereum in any way? For some reason? Not in my opinion. Paying one, then another, and a third doesn't seem possible, especially considering that Gensler wasn't chairman when Ethereum and Bitcoin were deemed non-securities. Is that something you all find acceptable? Leave a comment and we will continue. Grayscale CEO claims that $30 trillion in advised wealth would be unlocked with the introduction of spot Bitcoin ETFs. 
According to Grayscale CEO Michael Sonnenschein, approving a spot Bitcoin ETF may let an estimated $30 trillion in recommended wealth to flood into the cryptocurrency market. When asked about the possible effects of approvals for spot Bitcoin ETFs on the cryptocurrency market, the interviewee made this comment during a recent appearance on CNBC. Let's have a look at a CNBC interview clip. Here we are, with Michael Sonnenschein, CEO of Grayscale. As we welcome you into the new year and take stock of the cryptocurrency sector. We have a crypto super PAC working to achieve our goals. Perhaps it's. Perhaps that is the necessary element to ultimately motivate Congress to take action. You are a part of this, Michael. It was just this morning that it was officially announced. You know, here at Grayscale, we've spent countless hours on Capitol Hill over the past year, fighting for the rights of our investors and ensuring that our regulators approach cryptocurrency with all the knowledge they need. Therefore, education has been the primary focus for us. Now that the easy gains have been achieved, and many still don't understand what's going on with Bitcoin, it went from $25 to roughly $45 at one point, the price is $41,000 and even gold was trying to go past $2,100. And it was unsuccessful in its attempt. Everything had to do with interest rates and pivot points. When does the Fed intend to return its attention to a spot ETF in the UAE, given the widespread belief that it may implement some cuts next year? Reposition it? My guess is that both macro and micro forces have contributed to Bitcoin's price appreciation this year. On the macro front, I agree with you that investors are considering Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation and growing interest rates. On the other hand, when it comes to micro, I believe that investors' optimism regarding GBTC and its potential for growth as a spot Bitcoin ETF was unlocked earlier this summer when my team achieved our court victory. I don't sure what you anticipate. But anything like 65,000 to 100,000 is being talked about a lot in the financial industry as we head into the new year. In your opinion, isn't it already an asset, if that's the term you want to use? When it occurs? Is it going to reach new heights for you? I mean, it was as low as 17,000 less this year? It's almost like we've paid it forward with the move we saw. Of course. To be honest, Joe, I'd rather not guess at prices. But I do believe that market sentiment is very optimistic, and that many investors are considering adding Bitcoin to their holdings. As we move forward, we can see that the potential approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs will open doors for some investors who, for better or worse, I'd say worse, have been unable to participate in the opportunity to include Bitcoin exposure in their portfolios. We are primarily addressing the US advised market, which now stands at about $30 trillion in advised wealth. We are hopeful that the chance to participate in this market will be made available to those investors with the approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs and the uplisting of GBTC. Okay, so we've covered the possible $30 trillion inflow into cryptocurrency. In the interview, the host avoided making any firm price predictions for Bitcoin, but did ask the CEO of Grayscale to speculate on where the cryptocurrency could go in the event that a US regulator approves a Bitcoin spot ETF. Sonnenschein brought attention to the present market excitement, as more and more investors are adding Bitcoin to their portfolios. Specifically, he stated that some members of the investing community may be able to seize opportunities that may arise as a result of the possible legalization of spot Bitcoin ETFs. As far as he can tell, they are affluent investors who have been unfairly kept out of the Bitcoin market. Sonnenschein said that he expects a large amount of capital from the guided market in the US, which has $30 trillion of wealth, to enter the cryptocurrency market. We hope that the opportunity will be made available to those investors and that spot Bitcoin ETFs will be approved and listed so that they, too, can participate in the macro and micro dynamics that are driving Bitcoin, as he put it. Sonnenschein, when questioned about his thoughts on Bitcoin's current ascent, admitted that both macro and micro dynamics have contributed to the cryptocurrency's impressive performance this year. Inflationary pressures and increasing rates were his main points about the macro front. He claims that because of this, investors now see Bitcoin not just as a hedge, but also as a store of value. Regarding the micro front, 
he brought attention to the optimism that was produced among investors following the legal victory of Grayscale's team against the U.S. regulator. The court's decision opens the door to the possibility of a spot Bitcoin ETF that elevates Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. In the end, remarks that are woven into the presentation highlight how spot Bitcoin ETF approvals have the ability to usher in a significant infusion of advised wealth. That is the reality, everyone. Now, we can proceed to Reviewing the market, Bitcoin was unable to maintain a price above 44k. After a while, it returned to the imbalance zone, where the little shelf of volumes currently acts as resistance. There have already been two touches. So it's safe to assume it won't continue long. However, the issue remains, will buyers drive the price back up from where it is now, or will sellers drive it down? There doesn't appear to be an immediate reversal. In my opinion, it will return to the waiting mode after making a few more corrections. On the other hand, dominance dropped to 53% and some cryptocurrencies responded positively to the news. Our beloved XRP has suddenly fallen flat. Also, getting it up is currently on hold. Consolidation above 0.6204 is required. But at the moment, Bitcoin is not looking to expand. It seems like there isn't much to critique after all. Allow me to explain. Keep a close eye on Bitcoin prices and levels. There will be no further updates tomorrow. Everything will fall into place flawlessly if you wait until the highs come before you plunge in. I hope you all had fun. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later, bye.